Welcome back everyone to episode 7, probably the last episode in which we are playing as the Russian Federation in TNO, the last season of Europe, or really the brave new world. But, right now, I know we ended on a kind of a sour note, well not really sour note, but like a kind of like, oh my gosh moment, just invade anyways moment, um, in the end of the last episode. But, oh well, we're here with Operation Bagration. And then we'll do what? Actually, how long does this last? 30 days from month for this. 10% more, more division attack. Or more... Five percent more attack, five per, two and a half percent more defense, but ten percent more organization. Very cool. Production, huh? Half a billion. More cap growth and base for a hundred days. Increase lack of resource penalties increases. Uh, I could probably do this one. Reach retrofit old Soviet equipment. The war against Germany will no doubt require the Federation to harness any and all military equipment, useful technology, and more material that can be used in the fight against Germany. While we would prefer ensure. Prefer to ensure our forces are equipped with the Federation standard issue. The use of retrofitted warlord and the Soviet era equipment could prove essential for our military operations should the Federation endure modern equipment shortages in the future. Not bad. The Federation invades Einheit's back. The world remains shocked as the president of the newly formed Russian Federation, Vasily Shukshin, declared war upon the Grosz Germanisch Reich and the Reichskommissariats. The president stated the need to liberate Eastern Europe from German oppression and to right the wrongs made so long ago. The Reich, in response to the declaration of wars, proposed a series of process of mobilization against their old eastern foe, saying that they would destroy the all Russian army within only a few weeks. The world holds its breath as the two greatest rivals in all human history, both armed with nuclear weapons, battle off for what may very well be the last war humanity shall ever fight for the liberation of all Russians. Strong as well will know everything, shame and torment and self judgment and the joy of enemies. One last war. But still, he stared longingly at the row of trees in front of him. So Bramo urged within him, wanted to just run there and there and reclaim Russia single-handedly, although he hadn't seen such Russia. Neither had his parents either, but he was willing to make sure his generation would be able to not grow up in some backwater town in Siberia. He wanted to save the Russian people and the Russian homeland, reclaim what was stolen from them by the fascist powers that be. Thinking about all had, he had come from, living in Novosibirsk, he thought of the fledging technocratic government shooting into the stars by controlling the anarchy around and securing its far eastern possessions. The air was now tense and thick with a slight spattering of rain slicking down off his boots and coating the grass in a soft dew. The border itself didn't even seem imposing, it was pathetic even. And the facility, there were small. In the distance, there were small outposts one could see with binoculars and other. Than that, it was no wonder which so many could get in and out so easily. But Sealy thought of maybe just putting a foot over the border in a childlike notion. However, his dash as a stronger voice inside him drove him back. Leaning on a tree, he looked down at his watch, 1456. I read it on his arm. The town was near the fate of the Russia, hung deep upon him. The countless generations gained or lost by us would be insurmountable. The history of the world would be changed as the idea of hegemony over Europe it would soon be able to slowly be taken apart. It's now or never. Deploy pontoon bridges. Eastern Europe's geography is largely made up of vast plains, with large forests and numerous rivers. While plains and forests can be overcome by our forces, rivers have at times proven to be a headache for the forces of the all-Russian army who have struggled to advance beyond them, especially when the enemy trenches themselves on the other side. While the deployment of pontoon bridges will not ease a problem, or erase a problem, it will certainly make the efforts across the vast rivers such as the Volga and the Don a far less daunting task for our troops. Oh. Look at this. Yes. And we found some enemies. Oh boy. And they found us too. Oh boy. Ah. One last war. Uh, I read this again. Oh. Happened again, huh? It's now or never. Um. Economy's doing okay. Oh, uh, we're just waiting for their ciphers to get done, too. Oh boy. God, I can't imagine seeing 8,000, 25,000. It's not much yet. I'm so worried about manpower, though. Hello. Um, all this stuff is done. 40, uh, 75. Wow. We're already 1975. Jesus Christ. Votes. They're attacking us. We're attacking them. We do not have air superiority. God dang it. They have so many. Oh my god. We're losing so many planes. It's not even funny. Splat promote is nice. But still. Splat promote it. Jesus. Racking up casualties like crazy right now. Alright, this moment, I want us just to hold as much as we possibly can. Don't even worry about attacking. Just hold the line. Four time consumption. Invest Phoenix. When the war broke out, the government and the corporations agreed to set aside their political differences in order to consolidate the Federation's vast resources and economic wealth against the German Reich. However, the war of the Germans is pushing a primary producer of military goods, Phoenix, to their limits. 
High material demands for the war effort have pushed many FedEx factories beyond capacity, leading to the corporate to approach the president and formally request financial aid from the government to expand existing plans to accommodate for the demands placed upon them. While many within the government fear the potential consequences of such an action, it has become clear that for the time being, the government must support the mega corporations for the good of the United Front against the Reich. I am worried. Oh boy. It is not good. I should be able to get that done pretty easily, though. Oh, happy March 1st. Good God, this is going to be... I don't know how we can just... But, uh, you know, militarily. Also, we should probably get, like, supply from America. If we're, like, fighting the Germans, I would assume that the Americans would be like, Yo, they probably need help. Nuclear technology is nice, though. How's this coming along? Oh. I, I did this one, but it, it did increase our coalition unity, so... There you go. We can, like, like a... Just a little bit more. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to help all that much, but whatever. How's Project Millennia? Oh! Tension level. During the annals of history as one of mankind's bloodiest and most costly wars ever fought. A massive war, war born of revanchism fought on the massive front by two superpowers is nothing like we faced before. I don't know if we can really call ourselves a superpower yet. Due to the cost and lives and long drawn out nature of uh, such wars, we need to placate people by means of advancing the front lines, capturing the key seas, or a way of propaganda to make sure that war exhaustion doesn't hinder our war machine. There's a catch, though. Due to the powers of both having nuclear weapons, we need to curb aggressiveness at times or tension will get out of control. Though maintaining a controlled level of tension will might prove beneficial for the war effort, too high tension will put the war at risk of being plunged into a nuclear war. Peace won't be achieved by risking the enemy's capital. You need to think tactically and perhaps even make concessions to the enemy to get what you want. Be careful to exploit any possible diplomatic opportunities that might arrive that might give you more leverage or reduce the enemy's leverage. Or the Oka. Bro, there's nothing we can do. We're at eleven percent. Oh god, we, that's not good. And if GDP growth goes down, oh man, tension level. Hey, stage five. Yay. Train personnel. Yeah. Don't tell me we're getting nailing. I hate getting nailing baited so freaking much. Especially in TNO, my god. Um, oh, they're up there. Okay, that's okay then for now, since. Not much we can do about that. Um, they've lost 159,000. We've lost a lot of guys as well. Yeah, I don't know. This is just not working out well for us. I mean, this is going to be impossible for us to do. Germany has millions upon millions of men, and we don't. Like, and you have no way to raise your conscription level, too. Which I think is a big old missed opportunity for us. Starboard, huh? Captain Justine Christiansen looked over the bow of the Njord with an infectious smile. The crashing foam of the Baltic filled his heart, drowning his worries and bearing his hopes to calm shores. The perfume of sea salt and stench of the black coffee filled his nose in the distance. Gold screeches as they flew over the coast of Estonia. Austin, it was Austin now, a thriving limb of the gross Germanic Reich, just like his own country. Justine's smile dismissed, dimmed. He tried hard not to think about Norway's destiny. It really was in his place. It was just a merchant captain. Heck, he even owned his own boat. Justine was just a cog in the machine of one of the countless Scandinavians that made their living shipping IG Fabens medical products from one end of Europe to another, but when his mind drifted to his mother country, he couldn't help but despair. Germany t sunk in her talons deep into Norway's flesh, not just politically, but economically too. As people weren't completely dependent on the Germans, they would soon be. And what would come after that? What hundreds can never be free again? Will they ever be annexed into the Third Reich like Czechia? Or will they become a mindless appendage like the Netherlands? There would be something better. There had to be a better future for his children and his people. Excuse me, Captain. Justine rolled a call from his reverie. Seaman Peterson, how can I help you? First met Johannesson asked me to inform you that the vaccines have been secured as per your orders. And thank you on the flag. We're flying the Panamanian flag, sir. The Russians ought to see that we're on combatants, Peterson said. Excellent, we should make it to port, and then the world exploded. Peterson and Captain Justine were thrown into the deck with a force of a sledgehammer. When Justine uh, regained his feet, he saw a black smoke billowing from the wounded side of the yard. The gro ship groaned in agony began to lean. Jesus Christ, we just hit a mine, Justine said. All hands, abandon ship. Wartime conscription. You only get f recruitable population by factor by 5%, huh? Although the all-Russian army is proving itself capable of matching the German battle, we must forget that the Wehrmacht outnumber us in many metrics. So that's the only way to counteract the vast armies of the Nazi Reich, to amend our conscription laws, and bring more sons of Russia into the ranks of the all-Russian army. While the decision may be unpopular for many people, especially for those fools in the RSLP, it's a necessary evil that the Federation requires people to ensure victory against their greatest foe. 
Like, bruh. Bro, we in a war? You all gonna have to fight or die. Literally fight or die. So, we're still here. Home front. Oh, we can do this stuff. Pro propaganda campaign. Weekly war goes out. That's nice. Increase war exhaustion by a little bit more. Reassure the populace. Eh, we're okay with that. Oh my god. Income tax. Not bad. Please, private arms companies. Spend a lot of money. More production units would be nice. War bonds. Meet with general staff. More command power. Secure emergency powers. Diplomacy. For anti war propaganda. Increase war exhaustion. Increase tension. So 12%. We'll see. Oh, it's this. So an uprising in Rocks comes out Muscovine. Well, I guess we try it. Oh, we can do all this other stuff. And for this one, I want to try. Weekly War would be nice. Increase War Exhaustion. Um, we still get. How much? Oh, we lose Pudic Pirates come day. Why? Budget Balance Effect? What? Tension. War Exhaustion sucks. Balance Budget? What? Additional investments. Yeah, okay, yeah, and. Look at CS Hyperion plan. Let's create our own. This is not enough. It's honestly not like. Attack and defense, like, we're. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be enough. It might be, it might not be. Germany demands compensation. Well, I'm good news on ya, uh, Vladimir of Nasser, or superior in the Russian foreign ministry. Uh, Vladin Gurin gave no response. Instead, he reached towards the Newton's cradle he kept on his desk, clipped to one of the minute silver spheres and let go. Tiny and Marble crashed with its neighbors, and together they tap, tap, tap away the minutes. Sir, on your final ask, Gurin shifted in his leather seat. You may continue, muttered, his eyes never leaving, never leaving the cradle. We received five transmissions in the last 12 hours from the Panamanians, she said, demanding to know why we blew this Njord and her half her sailors to heaven. The Norwegians have sent the widows of the dead sailors on immediate blitz across Europe. It's not just an ironic spec propaganda push, they're getting airtime in Italy, Britain, Turkey, and Iberia. One of them is even making an appearance on a mid-air talk show in America, in addition, sir, are you listening? Gurren's eyes flicked from the cradle to Anya. Suddenly she felt terribly small, and what do they want, he asked. <clears throat> Anya Gulp continued, the Reich Foreign Office is demanding $200 million in Reichsmarks to be distributed by the courts to the Panama, the Norwegian waters, IG Fowl, and an unspecified group of German citizens in Oslo, she said. Fascinating, he said. Of course, the payments IG Fowl will be laundered to the Wehrmacht. Though how much cash are we willing to part with the purchase of public opinion? What an interesting act of political calculus. We need international opinion on our side, Anya said. I doubt international opinion will be the sucker for the soldiers killed by bullets bought with Russian money, Gurren said. But you are not necessarily wrong, Anya Vladomirovna. We're going to have one in our crashes. I'll recommend they make the payments. Okay, why not? Raise additional war taxes, reassure the populace. Uh, well, what is money? Also, I do want to see, like, over here, the Oka. Nope. We're close ish. Definitely not. This is going to be almost impossible to get. That's in Phoenix. We could call our allies into the war, maybe, but even then, that, that would open up this entire front, and these guys are no, they're a freaking militia. There's no way we can open this front up. Um, Moscow in our sights. That doesn't really work for us, though. Weekly map is 12,000. It's nice. Yeah, I think we're, okay, we're going to need that. Moscow in our sights. The main objective of the operation is against the Reich's ancestral capital, Moscow. They have been battered by the occupation forces of Germany, the settlers and ruling Nazi oligarchs living luxurious lifestyles while the Russian inhabitants were expelled from the city center, exiled out of the outskirts, and forced to work in inhumane conditions in the Reich's slave factories. Essentially, the Russian Federation will liberate the capital as soon as possible and draw the Nazis away from any native Western lands, no matter the cost. Bro, we trying. We are definitely trying here. But my god, they got so much armor. Um. That might be able to work, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Oh my god, that is devastating. We're so out of artillery, though. Also, I didn't want to call them in because the supply here is god awful. Supply? Oh, Jesus. 
Dread cast. Oh my god, it's so bad. I think we're kind of screwed for this war, maybe a little bit. Yeah, there's not much we can really do. We 1v1, as long as we know how to place things and stuff like that. We're doing okay, but... Oh! Hey, we want to build even better agriculture methods. Please go right ahead, even though we're already on modern agriculture, so there's not really much we can really do with that. So, yeah. I'm out, will you? There you go. I do want to get over here. They throw that other division away. All right, one more divisions are nice. Rally the partisans. Throughout the war, the partisans forces deep within the occupied lands of the Reich have to hinder the Nazi war machine at every turn. The Federation must cooperate with the most significant of these rebel groups and inflict maximum damage against Wehrmacht. Partisans within the liberated lands will be conscripted in the all-Russian army and join the Federation of the Liberation for Motherland from the tyrants of Germany. Oh, God, that sucks. Start diplomatic talks. No. Hmm. Bombing runs, less speed, stability. Hmm. I like this one the most, probably. Supply consumption goes way up, and the German Reich gets way more, worse supply consumption, which doesn't help out that much, but. Oh, the remain. Gregory roamed the rubble that surrounded the seasoned sergeant. Uh. He has seen plenty of conflict in this time, having fought in unification wars, fighting off the raiders, but this war, this war was different. Their destruction, brutality, and anger. Georgi looked at the bodies that surrounded him. Some were soldiers, some civilians. Most were, some were Germans, some were Russians. It was death all the same. The soldier's eyes squeezed tight, his fists bawling in anger as he tried to suppress the terrifying images of the many sins he had committed throughout his long war. German soldiers on the floor begging for their lives, settlers fleeing their homes, trying to escape the destruction. An entire towns full of German settlers, or Germans, set up blaze. As mission to liberate his people from the tyranny of Germany, he had become the very monster he once thought the Germans were. Was the president telling them the truth? Was his conflict as black as wives had been told, or were the Germans and Russians not so different from one another? Was the president nothing more than a whoop in chief's clothing? No, he couldn't be right. At the very moment, Gregory fell to his knees. He was angry at the people who had orchestrated this war. He hated the Nazi party for manipulating the people that manipulated the people of Germany. He was furious at his government, which had sent him to back into the fray. This wasn't liberation, this was war. Where young and stupid are tricked by the old and bitter into killing each other. Georgi sighed his hands often once more. The ones up top may have caused this, but he was he who was a fool. He had been stupid, angry, and allowed them to weaponize his flaws and send them into battle. He had been convinced by Shukshin he was fighting for freedom, yet he was surrounded by ruins and fallen souls. It was too late to be angry now. All the remains from him in his world of sorrow. They were the fools who played the game. God dang. We're missing so much here. Passive defense is nice. You know, there's still three divisions against those. That many divisions is not worth it. Um, More passive defense, I suppose. to night vision equipment. Mm -hmm. Well, might still be able to win. We'll see. Let's go in our sights. Rally the partisans. Strikes here. Uh, Muscovy itself doesn't have that much going for it. It's a little bit of manpower. 6 to 14 divisions. The biggest issue is really just Germany over here. 5 to 10 million manpower. Up to 79 divisions. Stockpile probably out the wazoo. Like, bruh. Home front. Uh, reassure the populace. Hmm. 
the general staff. More command bars aren't really needed, though. Where are we at here? Ah. So to do, get this one, we need this tile, too. That can be fine with us. You know, the fire. What are you ladies waiting for for Christmas? Major Jernishev screamed, let's get moving, go, go, go. Frantically, Nikolai tried to keep up with the rest of his unit. Screaming clouds of artillery fire blotted out the sun and crashed upon the earth, drumming and drumming. Beneath his boots, the muddy soil shifted and writhed, writhed as an angry rubble of tanks roared all around him. Quickly raising his rifle, Nikolai put another German flat on his back with a sharp crack. Call the other Major Howard up from above. The effing Chamatkins, uh, Kamchatkins will be in Moscow for you, move your butt. Rolling towards them, Nikolai saw yet another growing, growing row of panthers, infantrymen crawling in the furious shadows like ants. Nikolai's gut flipped and squealed as they approached, but he didn't have the time to rush. His unit dropped flat on their stomachs as the anti-tank squad loaded their arms. As he stumbled forward, a hand reached up and seized Nikolai's arm, pulling him to the ground. Kolya is insists. Keep down, can't you see the Germans? Misha, I. Nikolai was interrupted by a sudden thunder of the tank behind, beside him. That seemed to burst out of the ground itself. Nikolai screamed and rolled over, fumbling lusciously with his rifle. It was only when he saw the two-headed eagle pointing, painted on the side and heard Misha laughing that he realized it was one of theirs. Up, lads, Major Chernyashev leaped to his feet. As Russian tanks barreled down to either side of him, let's kill some crowds forward. With his blood running so wide, it felt like fire. Nikolai ran and screamed with his comrades, Ura, 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 even though they might get all gunned down. Above him, he suddenly felt like rippling, the rippling scream of jet fires above him as Russian falcons darted in between the rumbling flock of German bombers. Rows of tanks crashed into one another like a wave, smoke and flames leaping from the turrets. As the German ants began appearing from behind the hulking panzers, a storm of Russian gunfire was unleashed. Everything faded from Nikolai's mind, and all he could focus on was making sure his next step wasn't his last. The battle could have raged for an hour or an eternity. Nikolai didn't know. With every step, Moscow draws near. Um, they're fighting there. I want to actually attack here. Not going anywhere, you go in there too. Uh you go in there and you guys go in there too. Trying to find little spots along the entire line to see if we can beat them up. There's no way without getting the encryption done that we can really kill them all off. But we're getting there. We are slowly gonna slowly, super slowly, get them all done. Nice. Good. I mean, why is there no, why is there no race conscription level or anything like that? Because like, bro, we need the power of demand. We're still fighting here, huh? Obviously, that's not very good. Ah, oh, crap! Agent capture two. Are you kidding me, bro? This war, man, it's as a conflict. Ah. There's that one. We can probably get this one done. But I don't see the other tile. Like... This one here? Is it really this one? Controlling the radar station would be pretty good, though. To do... Come on, I know there's five divisions, but we have to have it. Come on. Bruh. We're not even doing that. Oh my god. I wonder why I'm doing well. Blood of the Slav, Hardball, Golok, and Shot Down, Rusty. Okay. Um, if you want to read this one, please go ahead. It seems like they, uh, it's kind of a generic one, but not really, sort of ish. Inspire the Muscovite people. Russians of Muscovy, you know who we are and what we've come for. Long have the millions of Western Russians dreamed for the day the motherland welcomes them back into a warm, loving embrace and the days now in sight. Brothers and sisters of the Russian nation, the time has come to finally cast away our shackles and that have confined you to the dirt on your knees and join the fight in your fight and your right to be free, your right to live, your right to be a proud Russian citizen. Worked on propaganda. We must remind our population who 
what who we are fighting for. We fight for the Muscovites who have been displaced by, from their homes and make way for their settlers and being treated as subhumans in their own land. We fight for the Caucasians who have long endured segregation and oppression at the hands of the Reich. We fight for the Ukrainians whose lands have been reduced to nothing more than farmland for the Reich. We fight for the native Vassan who watch on helplessly as their homelands are colonized by their oppressors. We fight for the liberation of Eastern Europe no matter the cost. spots here where we can just make a tiny little uh, blow them up basically especially soft targets like this the inf actual infantry a partisan agreement look at that mm. I want to encircle this so badly but I just we don't have the resources for it comrades welcome to the third combined workers congress of the occupied Muscovine region uh, Fedova Sidorov announced with a smile he stood on a splinter tree stump in the middle of the bits of forest his office was nearly 400 partisan soldiers and rebels. Not one of them had taken a bath in a month. Just the way you liked it. Our first order of business is a proposal from... Hold it, a woman cried, oh God, oh Zidia. Our first order of business, and indeed our only order of business, should be the reintegration of the revisionist elements in this Congress into the People's Army of Liberation. Adia Vladimirovna Gubilov, every time we speak, you insist on trying to start fights over revisionism, Sidorov said. Can we focus on the Germans for a moment? No, we can't, Gubilov said. How can we liberate the people of Moscow without first building a proletarian social platform? How can we... Agree we claim to be freeing the people of Moscow, but they're offering them a path to freedom, a comprehensive social strategy, and a plan to build socialism. Very well, said the Rothstein. Let's look at Vol. How many of you consider Bukharin a revisionist? A third of the assembled raise their hands. And how many consider yourselves Bukharinitsky? Sidorov uh, asked, 150 of the civil men and women raised their hands. How many of you consider yourself anarchists? 80 hands flew in the air. How many Trotskyites? 50 hands. How many Stalinists? 44. How many Luxembourgists? 33. And one that had a question. How many Maoists? 76. How many syndicalists? 22. Nearly all of them anarchists as well. And how many, Sidorov said, want to see those gosh darn fascists out of our country? Every hand in the forest stood tall like a monument, offering unity and support to the comrades in arms. Thank you, comrades. On the basis of democratic centralism, this Congress's first item of business will be to effect the destruction of the Nazi armed forces in the area with a long term goal of recl reclamation of the heartland of the proletarian revolution. Comrade Golub uh, Golubev, do you have any suggestions? Let's get down to business. Moscow's behind us, not quite. Where does America itself? Well, the war against Germany is primarily fought on the land and the skies. The role of the Navy has undoubtedly taken on a much larger role since the Great Patriotic War. While in Russia is against Germany, the Nazis have constructed a sizable naval force designed to challenge superpowers such as the U.S. over dominance of the Atlantic, meaning the Reich is more than capable of sending their fleets to raid our coastline settlements and regions such as the Barents. Fortunately, the U.S. of A., who have supported our efforts for years, have offered to sell its task force submarines that can support the efforts of the Russian Navy to defend cities such as Arkhangelsk and Bermondsk from German shelling. With a third of coastal invasions by the Wehrmacht troops, it's becoming an increasingly likely possibility. It would be foolish to decline such an offer. You know, I'm glad we can. They can focus on that up there. I'm really glad they can. My God, why can't we break through? I'm about ready to force the attack and just kill my own soldiers off. Like this is getting ridiculous. Like with even anti-air, it's still not enough. I do not understand. I'm surprised America would want, wouldn't want to send any divisions over here either. Um, think about there you go. We got that one. That's good. Uh, Eleven days. What do we not have? <sighs> Bro, there, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? There's no way we can get that. <laughs> Why? Why is it like that, man? Bro, that makes no sense. There's no way you can get all those tiles. Germany's way, way, way too strong to be able to, you know, for us to just blitz through this. Yeah, I know we have no armor, but planes, helicopters are way more effective than armor. 
Like, bruh. As old as Russia herself, Kostroma had been here from the very beginning. Kostroma had stood since before the founding of Russia herself. It endured the time of troubles and the rage of fire. It experienced the Red Russian Revolution and the horrors of occupation. From a world state to the front line of Russia, Kostroma braced itself for the task ahead. Sergei Bolshakov stood at the step of the city hall, observing thousands of people cheering on columns of soldiers from the Kostroma Divine Rifleman Brigade. Once he had been a toppled warlord, now he stood at the legally elected mayor of Kostroma, side by side with his friend Nikifor. As they watched, the sons of Russia marched proudly through the streets of their native city, each taking them step. Each step taken closer and closer to the Third Reich's frontier. This is way too positive for like the actual like brutality of all this. You know, it seems just like, like yesterday we would have done anything to stay at peace. Now we're cheering to send our boys back into the meat grinder. How can you support this, Sergei? His security minister had asked. Have a little faith in the cause, Sergei said. Our sons aren't marching to the die from the front lines to fight for freedom. How do you expect them to fight in such a battle if we can't show them off our most sincere gratitude? They're prepared to make an immense sacrifice. How do you expect them to have the will to face this great challenge without their family support? Bolshikov turned a uh, gaze at the flag bearers in the front of the closest company. One held a tiny flag of Kostroma before him, the strongest soldier of the company the tri before bore the tricolor of the Federation high into the air. When cut and tore the flag, threatening to throw it its, off its perch, but the thin fabric held. I get that, but Sergei, with, ev that, with everything that's happened since the fall of the old Union, the Russia's not as strong as she once was, N N Kifor explained, attempting to get his point across. You're right, said the mayor of Kostroma spoke. A wild smile on his face as he turned to face his old friend. We aren't as strong as we once were. We're stronger. Well, I don't know about that. In all honesty, like, this is ridiculous. Uh... I've never done this actually in TNO before. Launch when you're ready, I guess, you know. force attack. This is so stupid. This is so, so, so stupid. That, that wasted way too long. How, why? Now we've been back into McBay, so now we're in a golden age as we're killing our own sons off here. Meant to be celebrated, huh? I'm not about expected. Expected. Gotta be fine, but, you know, I'm sorry, but this needs more time or something else has to change. This is ridiculous. Uh, front lines, yeah, I mean, there's not really much we can do. Let's get emergency powers, we don't really need to. And they're bombing the hell out of us so badly, it's not funny. Like, Germany, like, would not be suffering that much effects. Like, come on. You know nothing about them? The World War Sports 100% still. War exhaustion, minus 30, and they still had 100%, yeah. You guys might have an opportunity, maybe. You guys definitely do not. Probably. I mean, we could try it, but... Like, with no co air coverage? Corporate synergy? Go still hot for which you never come to Baku. The whole place has gone to heck. A riot was raging in the street beside, outside his office. The workers have been sent to manage. Couldn't even walk to the oil field without getting a brick through the head. Supply lines were to the city. Word cut off from his maid. He hadn't made a full trip to the grocery store in months. Now he heard rumors that Russian army was only days away. It was time to leave. He shouted, he threw on his sport coat, or I'll show them now, he yelled. Those sons of guns and had me better be feeling my copter. The secretary responded with the careful words of a practice servant. Yes, Miss Mr. Hoffer, she said. We'll be ready in the helipad upstairs in 15 minutes. The flight back to Romania will be less than 10 hours. Unacceptable, he said. I want to be there in eight, not a minute longer. Rav Shana cast her eyes on Hoffer's feet. I believe they're concerned about overtaxing the engine, sir. Hoffer's face grew red, his eyes fixed on Orosh, Rav Shana's slim form. He stormed over and thrust his face forward until his nose was only an inch from hers. You know, I really don't get, care, he hissed. You people seem to think you have the right to counter, countermand me. I give the orders here, I make the decisions, you shut up and do as you're told. She whimpered and flinched away from Hoffer's towering form. Yes, sir, I understand, I'm really sorry. Enough, Hoffer spat at her feet. We're going to check on the helicopter, and if the work isn't on schedule, you're going to regret it. The pair marched up the stairs, Hoffner leading in Rav Shana, limping at his heel, eyes respectfully downcast. Outside, gunfire began to sound, the ride must have intensified. Hoffner began to walk faster. The pair reached the top of the circus and swung open to the... The exit to the helipad. There was nothing there. Wait a darn minute. Where's my helic? The butt of a rifle swung into the back of Hoffner's skull, knocking him to the ground. As he lay on the ground, head pounding in agony, he heard the voice begin to speak in Russian. Thank you, Rav Shana. Your payment is on the way. Uh, Scarlet Beds is Echo 5. I have the package. It's back promoted. Like, any damage we do, Germany can just replace. Like, they can replace so fast, probably. 
How do I lower exhaustion? Front lines. Contact propaganda is good. Contact for Europe. Brothers and sisters of Europe, the struggles for the liberation of our sacred continent is at hand. As all Russian army bravely marches westward to face of Wehrmacht, we call upon all free peoples of Europe to support my great struggle against the, our great struggle against the Reich by any means they can. Only when free Europe is united together as one, we can we free our continent from Nazi oppression and ensure the future of this ancient land will one, be one of freedom and prosperity, not for only children, but our children's children as well. Like this part's okay, I don't. I really don't want to call these guys in because they're just gonna open up a new like hole in the lines and whatnot. Smell of the gunpowder. Vlad and Guren's office was ice cold as always. Now the mouth you have a skating rink or a shimmering Christmas morning blanketed in white. Uh, nose for the frigid pain of paint of numb fingers, a glacial agony of marching through knife like snow without shoes. It was a cold of lost limbs while frosting your eyebrows and burning ears, and some other dude liked him. Sometimes Anya wondered if he was even human. I haven't received any information about the crisis, she said. She sat across from Gurren, creating little drags of ground fell coffee. Gurren frowned. Yes, I was told you attempted to break protocol. Remember that our enemies are always listening. He removed a vanilla folder from his coat pocket and threw it on the desk. Are you aware of Operation Eiffel? She shook her head. Good. No. Good, Gurren said. Operation Eiffel was a special forces initiative to capture and detain one Costo Coffler. He was a Romanian citizen and a longtime member of the Iron Guard. Well, Reich hired him to manage the most productive oil field in Baku. Anya put a close a fist to her mouth and deep in thought. The special forces wouldn't go to this level of effort just to grab a Nazi. There's something you aren't telling me. Gurren smiled like a wolf and joined the hunt. Well done, Miss Galashnik. We have significant evidence trying tying Hoffer to the Abwehr and the Suguranta. I have to imagine the Romanians want to back them. A German sent him a missive. It arrived a few hours ago. Gurren moved a copy from his desk and began to read to the criminal barbarians who claimed to be the remnants of the Russian government. We have kidnapped a citizen of our ally of the Republic of Romania. Your legal and primitive methods do not go unnoticed. Release Costal Hoffer or face Reich's wrath. He chuckled. Maurice Paul as to other people. We're going to release him. No, the special forces are going to interrogate him. Our job is to re draft a reply to the Germans. Go get your typewriter and tell me, he said, flashing a predator smile. Do you, what do you think about to the government of the Dying Reich? Tell me to work. Ah, perfect. You know what? We'll do all of them then at this time. Then. Now that should help us out a little bit more. 24% is better. Oh, shut down the blonde out of Germany. Nice. I like that that's a little different than normal, too. Negation, negotiations with terrorists. Oh, we're not going to get that one. Oh, god dang it. Come on. Oh, Vlad and Gurren's nickels flared wide as he gripped the plastic receiver. He hung up and looked at Anya with a grim expression on his face. Was he angry? I have a fortunate news, Gurren said. The Romanians have taken a number of ethnic Russian hostages throughout their tin pot dictatorship. Apparently, they only guarantee their safety if Kostel Hoffner is released in the next few days. We can't do that. I get an under, under, undesirable outcome. Neither is a massacre. Gurren stood from his desk and began to pace about the room. They've already killed 25 of the hostages, mostly women and children. The guard hung them on the meat hooks and tortured them to death. Anya's spirit trembled. Her face began to turn red and he clenched and unclenched his fist. Anya felt tears begin to form in the corners of her eyes. She swallowed a sob. We can't let them do this. Gurren took a deep breath. He took a deep breath and another and another. His face was a shade less red when he spoke. We can't let them set a president of terror, though. If the world sees that taking Russian citizens hostage will result in leverage over our government, we'll see our people grabbed off the street everywhere. Colombia, Indonesia, South Africa, anywhere there's terror, our people will be in danger. Anna shifted in her seat. What are you saying? We'll talk to the president. The well, war with Romania seems to be inevitable. For hate's sake, they spit their last breath at us. Well, it's their fault. First American subs. Oh, uh, free nation's assistance. A uh, ship loudly oh, <clears throat> uh, announced its presence out of the port of Magadan. If the ship flew in the windy sky, six white stars, a yellow and a green stripe, and a giant blob of blue. That was the flag of Sydney, the diamond of the land down under. A megaphone sounded in the air. Good day, mates. The air shipment of guns comes from Australia to help you kick crop butt. I, have a t I can't get, do an Australian accent. Ivan couldn't understand a single thing the man was saying, even though he knew some English. He looked bewildered. This is a shipment, yes? Uh, you're deaf? That's what I said, mate. Okay, yes. Give us the guns, please. Uh, the crew of the ship unleashed boxes and boxes of rifles and ammo for the Russians to use. An Australian crew member stopped on his way to talk to Ivan. Promise me you Russians will push those crowd wankers back to where they came from. Ivan suddenly nodded. Bloody oath, mate. The Australian violently shook Ivan's hand. Come on, get back to work, one of the Australians commanded, slapping the other on the back. As he marched back into the ship, Ivan could only think one thing. He'd never heard such a peculiar accent before. I mean, I kind of assumed Romania would go to war with us anyways. They're in the Einheit's Pact, so... Yeah.
We have air superiority here too. And we still can't do anything about this. Quarter million versus almost half a million. Still, that's not very much in all honesty. Hey, we got better research facilities though. We're in the academic golden age and uh, research golden age, aren't we? This is why I, I saved this episode for this one. Because I knew it I knew it could potentially take a long, long time to get and slog through all of this. My god. Uh oh, the Kingdom of England and Wales begin to send aid. As much consideration after much consideration by the English government, they have decided to support. Our offered against the Vermax and his military equipment, planes and mechanized equipment to supplement our armies in the struggles against the GGR. Is that it? Honestly, I don't like this one down here. I think, like, I know this is supposed to be, like, a tree, but, like, have a lot of, like, independent focuses, why not? Because So you can choose any of these at any time. So, like, you might want to invest in Phoenix, but you should, I might also want to contact Free Europe, and then with Free Europe, maybe have a part of the tree with purchase American subs or off to its side. This center part, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, over here, this sort of makes sense, too, I guess, but, like, I, I, I don't know. It looks, to me, it would just fit feels like it would fit better because you could do whatever you wanted to with what you wanted to get first. But maybe that's just me. As the world continues between the Nazis and the forces of the Russian Federation, the Kingdom of Italy has found itself in a unique position. While there were once enemies during the Second World War, much has changed in those long years since then. The relations between Germany and Italy have deteriorated ever since the completion of the Alantropa. Wait, Alantropa? That isn't... No? No? Oh, an assuring chaos that it created for the nations of the Mediterranean. With the fact in mind, there exists the possibility to convince the Italian government to bankroll the Russian war effort against the German Reich and assist in extinguishing the Nazi threat from Europe once and for all. Well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> More air doctrine, huh? If there's any way to increase uh, conscription as well, please let me know. Because even though conscription's not bad actually right now, but just like, ew. when do we get aid from everyone else? Because I know we're lacking hard. Oh, that's not bad though. Attack helicopters are very bad though. Well, you're just kind of hanging out. Which is fine, but I don't trust the Germans, so. How much further is Muscovy going to live? My god! I just don't think we can do this. Like, we're exhausting ourselves doing this. Like, it makes sense to do it in a segment here, but we just can't. We don't have the resources. It either refuses to aid our struggle. Of course they do. After much debate and discussion by the high-ranking officials within the, ten within the Italian government, the Italian Empire has decided to maintain their neutrality to determine that Italy and the Mediterranean nations do not wish to endure the wrath of the Reich and the potential fallout. This could cause it diplomatically for the Italian government. The response has been met with disappointment by Russia and her allies. The Reich's leash remains strong. Moscow. And I'll read this one, because we'll get this one done, too, um, eventually, too. Avengers of Moscow. Uh, after so many years of bloodshed and tears, the great city of Moscow is now back in the hands of the people. For decades, millions have dreamed of this day, praying for the liberation of our ancestral home. The day has come at last. Never again shall our great capital fall back into the enemy hands, no more shall foreign troops to desecrate these lands, Moscow, stay behind us, and now forever. Well. <sighs> we'll see. And I'll read this one when we get actually closer to that, because right now, like, this is insane. This is absolutely insane. Like, we need to be able to raise more conscription, or be able to get manpower from our puppets, which we can't right now. Or just stuff in general. It's, they're just. Having them independent is so weak. It's so wrong. I do not. Anyone who plays away for it does not trust the AI. You cannot trust the AI. The liberation of Moscow. In recent weeks, no city had more attention than the infamous city of Moscow as a center of German rule in Eastern Europe. And as a foreign capital of the Russian nation. Moscow is a prime objective for the Russian armies marching westward. Momentum has shifted to the Russian side of the conflict, with the city falling under Russian hands. While the Germans are far from out of the war, their ability to reclaim Moscow remains slim. Well, maybe. The city's fall has become a pub highly publicized event outside the Reich, where we see Moscow's liberation is beginning at the end of the Reich. Within the German bloc, since our hard work of preventing the spread of news regarding the significant defeat, regardless throughout the German sphere, what's the descent of are starting to rise as the odds begun to spread among the German public? Moscow's behind us. Honestly, if we get Moscow, there should be some sort of bigger effect than, than nothing happening. Like, seriously. March into Moscow. Well, I don't like these, because this time limit, I, I understand why it's there, but like, how? How? A long way from guns. Bogdan, the watch to the streets below, keeping his father's old rifles close, he's observed the Muscovites party in the streets, bringing life to the dark Moscow night. People didn't seem to care that those still were a raging on. The fate of Europe hanging in the balance, after decades of oppression, they were just happy to finally be free of all the pain they had endured for years. They wanted to endure slavery and fear of persecution. For once in their lives, they were finally free. 
Growing up in the hills of Siberia, under the rule of the Siberian Black Army, Bogdan never, really kn never truly known oppression himself. It always been, for the most part, free from the rule of the governments. Even when the Federation under Pokorshkin had taken control of Kansk, his family was left alone. To be, to see to be drafted to fight by the All Russian Army, to march westward against fellow Russians just to see how bad things really were. To see a land without freedom subjugated by a genocidal regime that made Bogdan sick to his stomach. Bogdan had been thinking about his father during this time in Moscow. He wondered if his father would have been proud of him for leaving his home and answering the call to free Russia from the rule of Germany. Bogdan sighed as the thought of his mother faded into his mind. He couldn't imagine what uh, uh, they must be feeling now. Terrified for his son, finding an enemy that wants to dream of Russia to die to crush Shukshin's vision beneath their boots. On the streets, they saw two kids. They were quite at first testing the boundaries of what they could do. More and more, they began playing simple games and only became more enthusiastic when nobody tried to stop them. They began laughing, jumping around as they played on the streets. The children, like millions of others across the front, were at last experienced true freedom. Some of them they would learn to cherish for the rest of their lives. It was all worth the struggle. Bogdan decided that a smile began to form on his face. The fight for freedom is the most honorable and forwards Russia. People of the Russian Federation are victory draws nearer. The Vermont cr crumbles, well, not really crumbles, before the unstoppable might of the All Russian Army. Let's begin a final great uh, advance against the Vermont and crush what little resistance there remains. This is way too hopeful, like I said earlier. We'll be, we will force them to the negotiation table, and if they are so foolish enough to believe they can continue to challenge our people, we will drive deep into the heart of the Reich, burn Germany to the ground, and hoist the banner of the Federation upon the ruins of the Volkshalle for Russia. I don't know about that right now. We are still reeling from a massive deficit of supplies. Like, my god. It is so bad right now. It ain't funny. But, uh... I mean, we're doing the best we can. For the liberation of all Russians, which is okay for a while now, but... Still. Really killing our political power here. Really killing our political power. Um, Yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep working on this, because this is gonna be... A long, 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 long drawn out fight. And they. How do they still have 100% stability? It doesn't make any sense. The Germans offer times. Ukraine. With their soldiers near the borders of the Inner Reich, the German government has approached the government for the third time, offering us many concessions in the East. In addition to their previous offer of Muscovy and Caucasia, they will unseat control of Ukraine and the Crimean Peninsula. Many within the public and upper echelons of the government cry out to accept this offer, saying that too many have died already and that the bloody shed shouldn't go on any longer. However, many within our armed forces say that the Germans are on the verge of total collapse, and this may be our last chance to reclaim all of our core Russian territory. Fall of Tiflis. Tiflis, the former Roman capital of the Georgian ASSR, has today fallen in the Russian army, a relatively short battle and one can only be described as a war of attrition in the Caucasus. Many predict that this battle will be remembered as the last major battle of the Caucasus front in the Second West Russian War. The Russian army, being greeted by many partisans in the Caucasus, they aided them in the hopes of ending the stratification established during the rule of Josias de Valdek and Permont. With the size and strength of the partisans, the Russian army always seemed two steps ahead of the Wehrmacht and the colonial garrison. It's looking crazy now. And circled inside of the city, the 22nd Panzer Division, supported by colonial regiments, tried their best to stop the Russian advance, holding out for an impressive amount of time while turning the city into a pile of rubble. The people of the Caucasus welcomed the Russians for now, and partisan groups have decided to lay down their arms for as a show of gratitude towards the thousands of Russians that died liberating their homeland and from the oppression of Nazism. Calls for independence remains, but for now the Georgian people are pleased to be able to pronounce the name of their city once again, undoing that madman's mess one step at a time. This is so bad, still. The fall of Smolensk. Despite the best efforts of the Wehrmacht, the city of Smolensk has fallen to the invading Russian army. The front lines only reached Smolensk recently after weeks of gruesome warfare transformed the Moscow theater into a slog through choke, a corpse choked mud. The infamous 51st Panzer Corps led the defense of the city alongside numerous professional and militia infantry formations. <clears throat> Unfortunately for the Nazis, the 51st found itself unable to reproduce its early success in Russian territory as vicious. Um, oh, I lost it. Uh, the rain turned the field of battle into an endless pick of thick, tarry mud. The numerous German tanks found themselves mired in filth, unable to maneuver or defend themselves. A series of lightning strikes by anti-tank specialists, some suicidal in their nature, ripped the fragile tank formations to shreds, allowing the Russian army to overwhelm the city's defenses. The Russian victory was compounded by the liberation of a concentration camp near the west of the city's border. Numerous inhabitants, including Russian and Polish slaves, Jews and former Zoranist partisans, and even several senior members of the von Salkem rebel, have been rescued from conditions described by the Russian commanders as inhumanely evil. Photos of the camp are already circulating throughout the sphere in the OFM, both of which have offered severe condemnations of the Reich's colonial policies. Capture small school, uh, son's death now for the Reich's commissar, and thus must have been at the very least, if not even greater, swaths of the German colonial sphere. With the loss of the city, the Reich has completely lost control of the western approach to Moscow. The German strategy has failed, and the Wehrmacht has now as little to no ability to project power eastward. The vast Russian army now has secured control over the territory of Russia proper. Unless the Wehrmacht succeeds in forcing a, uh, uh, a significant reversal, it is now likely that the war will end with, Mos with Moscow and the surrounding territories are returned to the Russian government. With the western border of Moscow being now controlled by Russia, for the campaigns in Austin and the north of Ukraine are now not only feasible but likely. Perhaps with this action, with this action, the war has not come within a measurable distance of, of its end. Our motherland will be whole again. Which helps us here, and this is really bad for them, but still. Um, what a political power. Yeah, this is still insane. Like, 
I, as you can see, we are out of manpower. We are completely out, pretty much. And we can't make any more soldiers, too. So, uh, you guys go up on up on up 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 We're doing a lot better down here, but still. Is anyone going in, please? Please and thank you. Well, of Theodoric Safin. On a magnificent turn of events, reports are coming in that the Russian army has solidified the control, its control of the city of Teorokshafen. Initially encircling the city, the Russians began a brutal siege during which Russian artillery bombarded naval and shipping ports, preventing supplies from entering the city via transport ship. By the time the Russians finally sold to the city, the battered and beleaguered German defenders could put up little resistance. What was left of the German high command of the city has reportedly fled across the water in hopes of reaching the mainland to continue the fight elsewhere. The crown jewel of the German occupied Crimea, Teorokshafen, served as a primary port for the Kriegsmarine operations of the Black Sea. The city also acted as the largest hub of Germans on the peninsula, with nearly the entire city consisting of German settlers and the Kriegsmarine officers. The Russian governors proclaimed the na renaming of the city back to its original name of Sevastopol, and began the redistribution of pro-Russian flyers in the streets. All Germans have been placed under extra curfew, and all slaves captured by the Russian armed forces have been set free as the city lies in ruin. The Russian government must now what decide what to do with the Sevastopol and the German pen Crimean Peninsula as a whole. With Slavs now as a minority, the task of reintegrating Crimea to the new Russian state won't be easy, as expected to be a violent ordeal. Local Germans have already begun resistance operations against the Russian occupiers, destroying key infrastructure needed to access Sevastopol and the rest of the peninsula. German High Command has announced plans to retake the city and reestablish Korean Marine presence in the Black Sea. Yet for now, the vessel lies in Russian hands, with it Russia's grip on the Black Sea has been made absolute, and the Germans' uh, naval forces have completely failed to the Baltic Sea. Experts are still uncertain of the war's course, but everyone understands this is a great victory for Russia and a crushing blow for the Reich. The Black Sea beckons and Russia's answered its call. The Treaty of Riga. What? The German foreign minister entered the manor, referred to as the House of Blackheads by local Latvians. He had been sent here by the Fuhrer to do the impossible job of negotiating a fair peace settlement for the Reich. A task was already sure it would be impossible. He kept a scowl on his face, his face glistening with a sweat rather than unfriendly looking Russian soldiers that escorted him to a city. Waiting patiently inside the room was none other than the Federation's most feared general, Alexander Novikov himself. Oh, he hit it 100%. He finally made it German. The field marshal spat out his last word, a snarl on his face, his bright blue eyes staring, glaring daggers at the foreign minister akin to that of a wolf stalking his prey. I'm sorry, Slav. But the foreign minister replied, hating his quivery, laughably high pitched voice, drawing out the final syllable in an attempt to assert uh, an aura of dominance over the smirking Russian who towered over him and meter away. I don't like wasting my time with subhumans. Very well, then the general chortled, gesturing to the papers laid out on the table in the middle of the room rather elaborately. Would you, Obelmensch, kindly sign that to terms to surrender? The war has not gone well for your side, and I think we both agree it's time for Motherland's rightful returns, uh, territories to be returned to her. It's not like your force could ever match up to ours anyway, anyway Novikov mocked, uh, flashing quite the grim. He picked up the paper detailing the Treaty of Riga, uh, his hands trembling as he scanned through the terms his worst fears being confirmed. Brachich, Stadt, Paulus, Bug, Kiev, Riga, the darn beast wanted it all back. Unacceptable, every cell in his body. Uh, oh my god. Uh, as he put, screamed as he put the pen to paper, signing the treaty of crippled Germany forever. Disgraceful, atrocious, this piece of paper was practically spitting on the Reich's pride on everything they stood for, and yet he had no other choice. Um, and so the curtains closed on this era, the torture Russia rejoiced, from the Mermans to Amelon. The battle to the bearing, the motherland emerges from the dust once again, however bruised and battered she may be, the treaty is the clear sign of the world, Russia's back. So we do get Belarus, the Caucasus, the Gotland, and Caucasia, the Baltic cities, which I do want, um, Muscovine and St. Petersburg, so we should, we're gonna get Poland though. What about the Poles? The fall of Paulsburg twice. Nice. That's helping us out a little bit more, and they're at almost 100%. Not enough. After intense fighting in the city of Paulsburg, it's been confirmed that the Russian army triumphed over the German defenders, repelling them from the city and raising the proud band of the motherland in the heart of the Volga city. After crossing the vast Volga River, Russian divisions were swift in storming the city, overwhelming the German defenders as the Russian Air Force began a bombing campaign over the city with whatever planes we've left, running hell upon the hastily built fortifications from the skies above. The German High Command quickly fled the city before the city command center had been captured by the Russian special forces, marking a Russian victory. The heart of the Russian, uh, uh heart of the Volga River. The city of Paulsburg was an industrial center and served as the capital of the Volga region and was one of the first major West Russian cities to be colonized by the German settlers, with the remaining Russian landmarks left rotting and broken, a direct reminder of the Soviet Union's failure in the Great Patriotic War. The Russian government declared its intentions to revive the Russian identity in the city, renaming the city Volgograd, spreading pro-Russian propaganda throughout the city and reintroducing Russian as the official language. The German neighborhoods are under strict martial law, with the reports of brutality and lynching of Germans carried out by the empowered former Russian slaves, while local German militias form in the outskirts of the city to fight against the advancing Russian army, sabotaging key infrastructure and Russian military equipment. The Wehrmacht has declared to take the heart of the Volga German region, but for now, the city lies firmly in Russian hands. The once more divided Volga River Basin lies under the complete domination of Russia. Experts are still uncertain of the war's course, but all are in agreement that this is a great victory for Russia and a crushing blow for the Reich. Now, what should we name her? We are so exhausted, it's not funny. We need to get Project Molinia done. Bros, there are plenty enough people here who could do this. 
Treaty of Riga, Russia's back. We didn't, even, we didn't capitulate almost anybody here. Like, we're, we're, we're done. Like, we're, we're, we can't do any more war. Like, we're out of manpower. Like, that's what I was complaining about so much. Like, earlier, I was like, oh, that's not bad. But, like, please tell me we got everything we wanted back. Please tell me we got what we wanted. We didn't get Poland or Romania, which sucks, but. Okay, okay, this is, I guess it's not the last episode. Holy. The Federation were born. After decades of humiliation, Russia's finally trumped with the Germans. The second city of Moscow as well as millions of other Russians have been liberated from German occupation. Feeling at such an occasion deserved to be celebrated, President Shukshin has organized an event in the Red Square of Moscow, a large military parade to remember all the wars Russia's ever fought in and to celebrate the nation's triumph. Yeah, day he calls Victory Day. We captured some... Oh, we already read this one. We captured Tbilisi. What? What? Uh, what? Hopefully that goes away because we don't need that. Not their war. Um, Legacy of the Occupation. Well, that makes sense. Baganov. Black Sea Reconstruction Authority. Boris Vilik. Baltic Reconstruction Authority. Look at this happy guy. Well. Sorry, Poland. We didn't have time for you. Declare martial law. Werewolf resistance. Weaken them. Um, expand military intelligence. The final strike. Memory's not forgotten. The phoenix rises. Dawn in Europe. I have a feeling that we're not going to be in any more war. Picking up the pieces. Now the West has been delivered and order has been restored. Now comes the time for rebuilding everything that we've lost over these past few decades difficult decades of both the Russian people and Europe have long endured. Eastern Europe may lie in tatters as a result of the German occupation and the Second West Russian War, but now that Russia stands united and free, we can come now together as one nation and begin the long healing process of rebuilding our motherland. The Federation Trumps or the Einheits Pact. A shocking turn of events, the all-Russian government, or army, has overcome the vast German armies. Overwhelmed by the Russian air superiority and experienced soldiers, the Einheits Pact has formally surrendered to the Russian Federation in hopes of avoiding an all-out nuclear war between the two countries. The Federation, the Federation accepted, signing the Treaty of Riga, which saw the Ionites pack the hand over the lands of the former Soviet Union. Millions within the Reich's former imperial lands have been rejoicing as the winds of change have finally arrived. Chaos, on the other hand, has erupted in Germany as the people accused the German government of weakness. And many factions from ancestors sympathizers to reformers have begun to battle it out on the streets while the Wehrmacht attempts to control the situation. Uh, only time can tell what the complete repercussions of Russian victory may have on both Europe and the globe. A bright future awaits the Federation. Better is ahead. Beautiful. We're building Moscow. I would like Moscow. Uh, replace factory complexes for those guys, part of Russia, or declare martial law. Oh, well, we probably should do that one too. Who else is in chaos? Nazi partisans are running rampant, harassing our force and attacking, attacking and fighting our beloved, uh, our liberated brethren on the streets. Before we can begin reconstruction efforts in our newly liberated territories, we must first annihilate these militant partisans and beat these fanatic Nazi settlers into submission as soon as possible. I guess in rebuilding Moscow too. Uh, well, let's do this one. Empire military government. So although the president does not wish to grant the mil military more power in the reconstruction zones, if the partisan threat is to be swiftly and effectively dealt with, it would appear that the president has no choice but to do so. With the military governors having more power to deal with the partisans and effectively manage other domestic issues that plague the West, peace and stability can slowly begin to return to these lands of Eastern Europe. And I apologize for being so negative earlier. It's just, it's very frustrating fighting this war when we know we're not going to do very well. It's very frustrating. No cops here, huh? What is this? But hey, we did it. We did it. I wanted to go to war with these guys too. All right, wait. Oh, look at this. St. Petersburg Military District. I don't want to see if there's any content for Germany here in which, like, they collapse. So, that'd be kind of cool to see. Um, yeah, we really took down the Iron Age back. Actually, where is it? Uh, let's see. Economic sphere. So, our sphere is worth $128 billion now. And we're still we're really quite below the top 10 economies here. But, you know, whatever. 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 But, you know what? I think we're going to end it here. I'm going to probably convert and delete a lot of our divisions and convert them to garrisons and stuff for now. But... If you enjoyed the video through all my complaining and whatnot, please do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also see what else we can do of, uh, with the rest of this uh, sub-mod for Tino. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.